Rowland electric kit users, and we're all stuck with this basic black color. Um, so I'm going to do a very, this is a very inexpensive way of wrapping your Rowland uh, V-Kit um, on the cheap while protecting the finish underneath. Um, you can leave it on as long as you want. You can change it up anytime you want. And um, you can use whatever vinyl that you feel is uh, best for you. So this is... This isn't really a how-to. It's kind of self-explanatory, but for those of you who are afraid to dive into one of these, don't be. There's really not much that can go wrong, providing you have a few basic little tools and you know how to put a, install a drum head and not to, and not to, you know, with these with these kits. If you're not used to these kits and, and tuning them, you want your drum head to feel tonally like it should when you're flowing around the kit when you get done. So. Um, you could use a uh, you could use a uh, tensioning tool uh, gauge if you'd want to a tuning tool on this um, to get the uh, lugs tuned or should I say snugged in uh, the correct um, torque. So I do it by feel, um, but you could do it any way you want, I guess. So your first step is to take these lugs out. Uh, a lot of people just take these out of the box and they start playing on these rolling kits and they really don't pay attention to how the the uh, actual mesh head fits. I like to make sure that they have pretty close tension all the way around um, to what they're supposed to be. And um, even though some of these drums are the same size and the circumference, I am there, you want to um, you want to make sure that they are the same tension. It creates for a more realistic response, um, like you would be playing normally on an on acoustic kit. So you're going to start off, you're going to take your lugs out. And these ones weren't very tight. Normally I would have went back in a star pattern, but these weren't very tight, so it really wasn't putting any unnecessary stress on anything. So I just did it kind of willy-nilly because well, it didn't make a difference. So that's it. We're going to remove our hoop and we can see how that hoop is. And here is our mesh head. Um, mesh heads are very durable. Now, how do we take the electronics out? Very simply. And that's how. Well, just like that. It just lifts out. And if you'll know, you can't go wrong on this because there's a notch right here and they groove this out in your bearing edge um, right here. So when you go to assemble this again, you just kind of find your notch and it'll fall right in. So you can't really go wrong. And now we have our lugs. But what about the rubber on the bottom? Well, a lot of people take this off and then they re-silicone because they're siliconed on. That is a pain, a royal pain in the ass to tell you the truth. So we don't do that. What we do is we get a nice straight edge and we butt it right up to this uh, easy peasy. So we take our drill. I just put a small drill bit on it and we're going to back these out. I'm going to get inside and I found on one of these drums that I already did and I found this quite odd on a new Rollin kit that one of these drum lug screws was a different size than the rest of them. And it was stripped out, which was very, when I say stripped out, the uh, the Phillips head on the end was already stripped out, which was very, very strange. So you can't go wrong. These all go back, and they're all the same size, except for the ones that um, are supposed to be anyhow, except for the one that is to your Tom mount, which is, which is obviously larger, and um, we really, it's, uh, that's quite obvious. So. You take your lugs out, they unscrew. Make sure you'll keep your plastic backing on because if they fall off, you can lose the nut that's inside, which holds the lug tension hole in place. And then we just unscrew them. I know this is a long process, but it's going to be a long video. I'm going to skip through a lot of parts and speed up a lot of parts, but I figured I'd show you how to start. Now, my vinyl that I chose. I wanted, I like the looks of the uh, Sonor kit, the, um, the old martini kit in that teal sparkle. 
and I had a uh, I had a real hard time finding that color, but I actually found some craft vinyl that um, fit the bill, and it's quite beautiful. I I have did a couple of these already, so I'm just kind of going backwards on this video. You're gonna see the process as we go. So, but um, there's that. Just remember the round goes up the side. You got, of course you can't you can't mistake this because your bearing edge is up, and that's about it as far as this goes. You can give this a clean up if you want to. Um, this one isn't dirty to bulk because it's new. But what are we going to do from here? Well, we got to figure out what size wrap. And I will tell you on these 10 inch toms, let me make sure that these are the tens. I don't want to misquote, so let me make sure. I've already did my measuring, but uh, I'm still going to double check. Yeah, these are a 10 inch tom. And you're going to want to cut a piece of vinyl. That's going to come up to, well, where this is pre-cut here, we want to use the straightest edge on the bottom because that's what's going to be seen butting up against this rubber on the bottom, this rubber gasket. And the measurement here is three and a quarter. So from here to the bottom is three and a quarter. So we're going to cut a strip that's 32 inches long and that is three and a quarter. And that's what is around the entire kit with exception of the base drum. Um, I'll let you guys figure out your own base drum measurements. I've measured it. I forget. But for the rest of the toms, except for the base drum and the uh, what would be the floor tom, which is, I believe, we're going to have to do a 39-inch strip, also three and a quarter, I believe. Um, we'll, we'll know when we get there. But for your toms, your two 10-inch toms, 32 inches, three and a quarter in depth. So just so you know. Um, but always measure yourself, make sure I'm correct, but I'm pretty sure I am. Um, but you're still going to want to measure yourself. I don't want to be responsible for anybody messing up. Um, but anyhow, we're going to go over now and we are going to check out the vinyl here. Let me get you over here. There we are. So this is our beautiful sparkly teal vinyl and I have already marked out where I need to cut and this is going to be from the here to here is going to be our three and a quarter and there is enough strip here that is going to go on the floor tom itself so let me um and I did make a mistake earlier I'm gonna, actually going to have to piece the floor tom a little bit but it's not permanent so I really don't care but let me get you set up here so you can see exactly what's going on and hopefully the camera does not fall because that would be terrible oh, there we are so what I have done is made my this is exactly make sure I'm right yep 32 inches in length and to here we have our three and a quarter so I'm going to take a straight edge here and I'm just going to connect the dots and make a straight line using a pencil and uh, let's make sure it's right on the money because that's what we want. And there we are. Straighter the better. Even though this side won't be seen, we want it straight because it's going to be running right along with that bearing edge. And that, that uh, hoop will cover it. So if you're off a little bit, not a big deal, but keep as close as you can. And how do we cut this? We People ask, how do we cut this? Well, we're just going to do this with some good, sharp scissors. That's how we're going to do it. And I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to start right on this line. We're going to trim this down. Normally, if these were a bit sharper, I could just run it down and it cut. And... Uh, Unfortunately, this one here is going to roll up on me, of course, but I'm just going to stay on that line. Let's see if we can get something to hold that down a bit until I get to the end. There we are. There's all different kinds of ways. If you guys have a mat to cut on or something to cut this better, but this works for me. It's fast, it's easy, and it's not permanent. Why is it not permanent? You're saying, what about the sticky residue? Well, you're gonna have one place that actually sticks on the drum. 
the rest is sticking to itself. So we're gonna put this up because this is a piece that's gonna go on another one. And here we are, as you can see, with our beautiful teal sparkle. And this stuff really, really pops. So we have a protective film over this one. It says remove protective. You can use any brand vinyl that you feel necessary that you would like to use. You can use an automotive vinyl. This is craft grade vinyl, but it's the only one that I could find that was in the color that I wanted. So the first thing I want to do is take this protective film, not all the way off yet, but just, and it's hard because I don't have any fingernails, so sometimes this is very difficult for me to even get these started, but I'm going to peel this back just a touch so I can work with it and peel that off and it's easy to get to afterwards. But now this is going to go on the drum. So let's go back over to the drum over here and we'll work with this here and um, show you exactly how we're going to do this. Okay. So we're done with our measuring. We don't have to worry about any holes in the vinyl, anything right now. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get comfortable. And hopefully you guys can still see what is happening here. Okay. So we're going to make sure this fits around. Of course it's going to, where's our straightest edge? Okay, so this is going to be the top because I can see some of my pencil line and this is going to be the bottom. And as you can see, that fits around with a little bit of an over and that's the 32 inches. So, 32 inches. And then you can see the seam where they put the factory one is, well, not exactly the greatest. But, however, we're going to start the new one right here with this. But how do we do that? How do we get it to stick? Well, it's very simple. We're going to take, let's take this side. Here. And if you remember, I peeled some out. I don't even know if it was this side or the other side now, but I peeled some of that other off. So bear with me. Like I said, no fingernails. And this is very thin because it is craft grade and it's very inexpensive. How inexpensive is it, Mike? So it's so inexpensive. No, it's uh I got this from Amazon for a whooping eight bucks i got two of them though it cost so it really cost me 16. so i don't want to i don't want to stick that down like that i'm just making sure that everyone's lining up what you want to do is take it and cut the strip off just like this i'm going to keep see that backing make sure i got no bubbles i'm keeping this backing on on this craft grade vinyl i'm keeping the backing on and um if you got a good automotive grade the backing's very good also so this is the only sticky part that's gonna go on this drum. So that's why it's so easy to take off. Now, we simply wrap this around and we line up our straightest edge with the rubber gasket. And I line this up and make sure that this is all in place and it should self-line. And then I run my finger up the middle, boop, just like that. Smooth out that little bit. Make sure it's right there. There we go. So now we're stuck down. Now what are we ready to do? Well, now we're ready to wrap this around the drum like so. And you see how that seam is, even looks better than the factory seam. And if you see this little bit of black right here, like I said, I cut it a little bit shorter because I don't want it to interfere with the bearing edge or the hoop. And you will not see this black, just so you know. So what do we do now? Well, now we have to get, we can take this film off so we don't accidentally stick to it. Now we wrap this around. We don't pull it tight yet. And now we pull the backing off of this side using my non-existent fingernails once more. And you want to use vinyl that's not going to wrinkle or crinkle or, or, or mess up on you too. So I mean the quality of the vinyl does matter. I took a chance with this because it was the right color. However, this is working out very well. And this is a, uh, I say vinyl. I don't even know if you call this. This is more of a uh, metalized um, vinyl, actually. It seems to work good. Oh, come on. Here, peel off. And I'm taking my time to peel it off because I don't want to ruin it. So, but you'll see. 
you can see the sparkles right underneath there. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. You see, remember what we did on the last? And fold it right there. Not even really a fold. You just kind of hold it back. And I'm going to take these scissors and I'm going to cut about the same amount off. And as you can see, now we have this part that's sticky. So I'm going to pull this taunt and running it right with this rubber gasket on the bottom. And I'm going to pull it taunt, make sure it's taunt on top, and I'm going to run it down. And I'm going to seal this overlay on top and push it down like so. There we are. And now our drum, and if you get a little bit, it kind of looks like it's out because a lot of times these gaskets aren't perfect. Just go around and make sure that it's up against that gasket. And if you see it coming up a little bit, use your fingernail, lift up the gasket, make sure it goes underneath it a little bit. There you go. Beautiful, right? Doesn't that look great? But what about the holes? Well, the holes are one of the easiest things to do, and let me show you. You're gonna get a small, you're gonna get a small drill bit to start. Very small, because if you use a big one, you can twist up your vinyl. So we're gonna do a small drill bit, and we're gonna mark our holes. I use it with the drill bit, and I simply start it here. It's easier, actually some people, and it's probably the best way, is if you can see where your hole is through the vinyl, you can do that. So there's one, and I can feel it with my thumb. Two, I feel just on, go through, feel it with my thumb. See this? And this is all we're doing. And I'm th this is simply marking the holes for when I come back with the bigger drill bit. And sometimes it feels like it's not going through. It's just because, well, it's, the vinyl's actually stronger than you would think sometimes. There we go. And making sure I'm getting them all here. Maybe use your use my thumb usually. That one. Where are you? There it is. Come on. I don't have the sharpest of bit either, but you do want to start with a, with a kind of a uh, a small bit because, like I said, you don't want to tear anything up in here. Is, make sure it's right. Where are you here? Um, uh, mark it from that side. There we go. Okay, so there's one. Okay. Yeah, that's our seam right there. So this looks better than the factory scene did, which is kind of ironic. Um, I'm gonna tell you, as an acoustic drummer, going to an E-kit, <laughs> and an X-drum builder, if you didn't know, and that's why I'm not taking a lot of time on this, because, well, it's an E-kit and it's for fun. We'll take this out. This is meant to show you the easiest way and the least expensive way. We take a bigger bit that actually fits the hole. You don't want to oversize your hole. Let me make that very important to you. But at the same time we're doing this, if you look inside these kits, and that's what I was about to get at, these aren't a very well-made drum kit. They're not. They're using some of the cheapest materials. Their bearing edges are, well, they're shit. Well, it's not an acoustic kit, so it doesn't matter. I would guess that it really wouldn't even need a such a bearing edge on it because well they're not really tunable as long as it's level and i'm going to guess they're not even that level either i could go back and put it on my granny i can guarantee they're not though um so what are you paying for well you're paying for these electronics right here this is what you're paying for and this is not really high tech either so i will have to tell everybody and they might not agree, but I'm going to deal with facts and reality, that these kits, I missed one, these kits are very expensive, and you're definitely not, and I repeat that, not getting what you pay for. You're just not getting it. Um, looking back, and I love the sound of this kit, don't get me wrong, it sounds great. And it functions the way it's supposed to thus far. And it, do, it is fun. But knowing what I know now, like I said, I say this because, well, I used to build custom drum kits and Baker percussion. And um, knowing what I know now, and I look at these, you would think 
that for the price you pay for these, you would be getting top quality materials. And you're not. You're getting kind of poor crap, well, actually poor crap. The quality of this shell would be comparable to one of those cheap griffin snares that you buy on Amazon. And actually, the griffin snares are probably, and realistically, a little bit better. And I'm going through these holes a couple times just making sure the, the uh, lugs go on properly. Um, so, that's what you're getting as far as shell quality goes. What we're using these is an electronic kit, so it, we're not looking for resonance or anything like that. We are looking for, I'm going to go and place my lugs in now. Boom, boom, boom. They all should go in easy. If they're not going in easy, take your time and make sure you're drilling out the, uh, the rappel good enough. As you can see, they're popping right on there, and we'll put our screws in in a second. So, you're not getting what you're paying for. The electronics on it aren't that great. You're really paying for the module. Um, triggers are decent, I guess, but are they, you know, $2,500 worth of decent? Jeez, I don't think so. <laughs> but they do work. But if you think you're getting a quality kit with quality wood, that is definitely not what you're getting when you get an e-kit. And um, I still am glad I got the e-kit. But I'm tempted to, well, build my own custom kit and drop the electronics in it and have something that's actually spectacular is what I'm tempted to do. So maybe we'll do that later on. Okay, let's get back to the drum. The lugs are sitting in. They are not screwed in. I'm just making sure everything's going to fit. And this is the top of the drum. This is the bearing edge. And we are going to put our tom mount back on here and make sure that that fits in the hole properly also. Sometimes they don't because the hole might not be drilled out enough or you might have a piece of vinyl catching. This one doesn't. It's in perfectly. Remember I said the bigger ones are pretty obvious. So that is for the tom mount. And I'm just going to start those. And I'm going to start all my screws, and then we'll go down through and we'll tighten everything up. And I hope you can see how nicely that this all laid on. Relatively quick, kind of pain, painless. You can do this with any drum kit. And there is a company out there which I used to use all of the time with some of my custom kits that, well, somebody would order a custom kit up and they would want a wrap. And I could get a hold of this company and they'd do me up a wrap, pretty much anything I wanted. And that was called Bum Wrap. And they're a drum wrap company and they use a nice thick material that's pretty durable. And I think they do a good job. Um, and you just tell them the sizes you want. And they send it to you and you wrap your drum in it in the same process that I just showed you. And it does not stick to the drum. It sticks to itself, which is pretty cool. So it's pretty much, as long as you're snug around it, free floats around the shell, and it's beautiful. And it protects the color underneath or what have you. And you got something custom. Um, or you can get expensive. You can, you know, go out. I did a lot of kits in the Ludwig Black Oyster Pearl or White Oyster Pearl or what have you. And it gets very, very expensive and very, very pricey. And if we're in the drums, we don't mind. We do that stuff. So that's the tools. That's all the tools we need for this, for this kit, for the Rollin kits. I can't see putting a lot of money into these kits when... They already cost a small fortune for what you do. So this is my effort to show you on how the on how to do this on the cheap. Um, and I just set my you can do these by hand or whatever. I just have my drill set where uh, it goes at a certain pressure. Like I said. As far as tuning these, well, we're not really doing that. We're just keeping equal tension on the heads on a bearing 
edge that is subpar. So it's not uh, not a precise science like it is with an acoustic with an acoustic kit. So there is this. Isn't that look good? Looks amazing, right? Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. So we can do the same thing. Now we're going to take our electronics, and if you remember how I said, and this is all there is to it. This is your trigger, okay? And here's your your jack for the trigger. And we're going to notice that there is a little. I'm going to find it here. Now I'm going to look for it. Where are you? There's a little notch right here, and where it's notched out here. So you run that. It's going to fall in. Boom! Can't move. That's where it goes. So the triggers are located in a position where they are supposed to be. Um, as far as the drum heads go, I, I mean, these can go on any way you want. Any position you want. I don't tighten these down until I get them on the kit to make sure that I'm kind of OCD and I want the writing to be looking at me in the right way, not cocked around here or over here. I want it kind of looking correct. So um, I just kind of sit it on there I tighten the lugs completely while they're on the kit after I've moved the head into the position that it is supposed to be in. So let's get these, start these lugs by hand. And we'll get them all in there. And I know a lot of you think that, you know, the video's long, it's drawn out, but I'd like to show you exactly how simple it is. I mean, it might be a long video, but in the grand scheme of things, you're really drastically changing the appearance of your kit very inexpensively. So what do I have invested in this, doing this? Is it eight states? 16 bucks, I think. <laughs> $16 and some time. So, and the great thing is, if you mess up, it literally cost me 16 bucks worth of vinyl. I got two things of it because they come in five foot strips. And uh, I got two things. Like I said, I'm not making these. I can back that off a little bit. I'm not making these tight because I want to be able to move that drum head after I get it on the kit to the position I want. And then I will tighten them in sequence. So there's videos out there about that, guys. If someday, I've used to, I used to have plenty of videos out about that stuff, but. Uh, I haven't did one in a long time. Maybe we can do some of that stuff later on on how to uh, how to tighten them. But you can even with these, you can get a certain tone around the edge. Um, as long as you, it's hard to hear where you have your trigger, because that does dampen it a bit. But how does this look? Is that beautiful? It's a beautiful drum. And we'll go back. We'll put it on the kit. And I have the bass drum done done already. I have the snare done already, and I have another tom done. I think I got one more to do, and that would be, well, it's just the, the biggest tom, which would normally be the floor tom on the acoustic kit. I have that one to do. And if you guys are worried about your V-drum emblem on your snare, um, I will tell you, it does come off very easily. It's, it's got two little screws and nuts that hold it on, and then all you want to do is just give it a little bit of heat and run a razor blade under a little bit and there's just a little square of uh, adhesive that holds it on pops off i took it off screwed it back on right on the badge it was very easy and i was very careful not to scratch the black finish so let's go into the studio back to the studio now and um i know i'm ocd i'm polishing up my hardware of course um let's go back in the studio and uh i'll show you what we got done so far and I hope this is helping you guys out. All right, here we are in the studio. I hope you can uh, see this, but uh, actually very beautiful. And here's the Tom that we just did. I'm about to mount this. And as you can see, definitely a lot better than the black, in my opinion. And I'm gonna put this Tom back on here. And I'm glad I did not uh, tighten those heads down. I'll get this on. And I always, depending on the style of music I'm playing, I actually take my toms and put them in all kinds of various positions. Um, if I'm playing jazz or if I'm playing rock or metal, um, it depends on, that depends on where my, you know, my toms are going to be. But check that out.
let me um lock my tripod in place and now as you can see snare drum reminiscent of the martini kit now from sonar very cool we got one drum to do and that's the one in the back and i believe that's going to be a 39 inch strip and it's also going to be three and a quarter in depth And there you have it. Let's get that last drum done. Um, I'm not going to put you through the torture of that. And we'll come back and take a peek at the kit when it's finished. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back real quick. This is the floor tom. And I just want to make note, like um, I said earlier, about, about the uh, some of the quality and care that goes into the actual shells. These lugs were literally kind of stuck in here because your tolerances are just off. So where the other ones actually fit, we'll notice that the drill bit that we used on the other one, it doesn't even want to go in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually still use this drill bit because these holes are too small. They're too tight, they're too small, and it's not, um, it's not the same around the whole quick kit. So. Whoever was doing the drilling obviously didn't use the same bit that they did on the other shells. And these shells are all numbered, so I don't know if they match. I've just got a year on them, obviously 2020, but, um, you know, and they got a, a, probably some kind of unique serial number also. But, yeah, so it's not uniform across the whole kit, and that's what I'm just getting at as, well, as far as quality of the shells go themselves. They kind of did it on the cheap, and... Did what they needed to do and like i said even with one of these lug uh, screws one was actually stripped out and it was a different size head than the other ones which was really odd you think that that would at least be uniform so this is the one we're going to get wrapped um, i'll be right back we'll show you the whole kit done. all right here we have the finished product i don't think it turned out too shabby um it looks good. It looks good under the lights. It definitely looks better in person than it does on the camera. Um, it's got that beautiful, beautiful sparkle to it. Kind of the look I was going for. And the great part about it is if you get sick of it, guess what? You can do it again with anything you want. But it'll probably stay like this for a while. Just goes to show how quickly you can recover and protect what's actually under there. And um, you're really not in any danger of messing anything up. You're not really pulling any wires out or on any wires. I think the hardest thing you have to do is the bass drum when you unscrew the plug-in for the uh, jack. And that's just one little... One little uh, screw to take off, or bolt I should say, and that's it. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you could, hit that like button, share, subscribe, and I'll be back with you soon with some more how-tos or suggestions and whatnot. And um, I hope you can share this, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again. Thanks for watching Fulton Street Beats, and you guys have a fan Fantastic. Okay. Bye. So I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of extra bonus footage if you care to stick around and watch it. And then we're just going to do a little fast forward of me covering the bass drum in case you guys are curious how that went and what I did exactly with the uh, with the uh, airport for the uh, the hole for the airport in the um, in the bass drum and the kick drum. So stick around for that if you want to. And I'll talk to you soon, guys. Bye.